Um, the other kind of housekeeping announcements that I wanted to make sure to get out of the way is uh, one, if you if you joined us for our last live stream last month, you probably know that we have launched our new um, white toner transfer printer, the Lumin, um, Luminaris 200 white, white, white toner transfer printer packages. And uh, we have two packages, the starter package and the pro package. Um, comes with the heat press, comes with the supplies and paper for everything that, that you need to get started in the t-shirt transfer business. So if you um, haven't heard about that already um, and you're interested in learning more about that, I would encourage you to you know check out those printers um, that we have on sale. Um, I believe it's uh, it's like 95 bucks a month in terms of monthly payments as well as um, uh, you know has everything that you need to get started in the business. So if you're looking to, to get started in heat transfer, it's a much lower lower uh, point of entry in terms of uh, upfront cost and that might be helpful for you. Um, the other things I wanted to mention are um, with the with with the embroidery machines, as you see probably on the screen right now, uh, we do have an ongoing uh, sale going on with 130 bucks a month for um, our embroidery machines. So starting with the EM1010, 130 bucks per month. Um, if you're interested in that, that would be a great time to get started. And then on DTG, we also have an all-inclusive Rico R1000 DTG package for only 235 a month with our 0% financing. So those are the three main products that we kind of have, um, you know, obviously with the with the importing machines, with the um, Luminaris 200 white toner transfer printer that we just launched, as well as the importing machines. So if you're interested in any of those products, make sure that uh, you get in touch with our team and uh, inquire about those different packages. All right. Um, we also have a couple of sales uh, and promotions going on on shop.recoma.com where you can get 10% um, off all Recoma heat presses for th this week only and also 25 sheets of Teflon paper which you can use you know, to, to, to protect your garment when you're doing heat transfer and, and heat pressing it. Um, we show that on the screen uh, here. You can go to shop.recoma.com and all of our heat presses are 10% off plus you get 25 sheets of Teflon paper for this week only. Um, we also uh, are offering 10% off all sewing machines. So if you're looking for any industrial sewing machines to do like uh, patches or sew on patches to your hats uh, to complement your embroidery and custom pair business, make sure to check those out. Those are all 10% off as well. And um, shop wide uh, on the on the online shop. If you order over a thousand dollars on your order, you get free shipping. So a lot of people have been actually ordering, you know, about two heat presses, uh, two, two to three on average. They get like a flat heat press plus a hat heat press, and then um, you know that added together will be over the a thousand dollar threshold, and you get free shipping on both items, which can easily save you a couple hundred dollars. All right. So those are all the announcements. You know, this is going on for uh, the the shop is and the discounts there for the ten percent off and free shipping is going on for this week only. So if you're looking to get into you know um, the heat transfer business, check out the heat presses and get some free Teflon paper. If you're looking to you know uh, kind of supplement your business with so with industrial sewing machines, make sure to check those out on the shop as well. All right, so um, with that being said, it uh, seems like um, audio and visual is all working fine. So we'll kind of get started with some of the questions. I'll kind of go through um, Facebook first and um, see what questions you guys have. So um, for those of you that are just joining us, if you if you don't know the format, really, it's just very open-ended. So if you have any questions, type them down in the comments below. I'll try to get to those within the hour that, that we have. And then at the end, we'll also announce the winner of the thread kit. All right, so got a couple of people here from different places. Um, Deborah Henson from Vir Virginia. Uh, hello to Miriam. All right. Okay. Um, quick question from Eddie. Uh, Eddie Buzzon. I think Eddie, you've also messaged me. Um, 
privately looking for a machine. You mentioned, you know, your, your, your questions about, you know, um, people complaining about service techs not reaching out and, and taking weeks to get back to them. Um, are we short on people? I, um, I mean, I think there's a there's a shortage of of uh, of people across across the country right now um, for, you know, a, a lot of businesses looking to hire. But to answer your question, I mean, I think those are obviously, you know, we try our best to kind of get back to everyone in a timely manner. And I think for the most part, we do a great job of, of um, making sure that that happens. Um, there are times where things could get a, a little bit longer than expected, but I think our team is generally, you know, pretty, pretty on top of it. And, um, you know, I, I think compared to other competitors in the industry or just overall, not even within the industry, I think the general sense from a lot of people is that we have quite good customer service in terms of not, not only good, but great service in terms of getting back to people. Um, some things obviously we're, you know, we're not perfect and some things do slip through the cracks, but, um, I think people are are made aware of that, and we try to every day try to improve and um, get back to as many people as possible. I think we have a, you know, our goal is to if you if you are inquiring on, on the same day, we're getting back to you in the same day, at least with a, with a response of that we got your inquiry um, and we're we're looking into it. So um, that being said, you know things things do happen. Uh, I don't think any company is perfect, but I think in the grand scheme of things. Um, we do a much better jo job than than anyone else in the industry and, and across different industries as well. I think we, we hold ourselves to a very high standard of customer service and support. So um, it's not even like we're comparing ourselves against other people. It's just we're really trying to set the standard uh, of what what customer service should be like. And I think a majority of the people here would agree with that, that um, they've had a great experience with our service team here. But if you have a, if you in particular have a particular inquiry that you're looking to get an answer to, you know, feel free to reach out. And um, if you're not getting a response, you know, reach out again. And our team is um, sometimes might be backed up with some inquiries, but generally we will, you know, do our best to get back to you. Jonna McCloy says we would love info on the pro package, but never got a response. Can I get information, please? So yes, uh, if our team can, um, you know, get in touch with Jonna and and get the in, get her info so that our um, product specialist can reach out and uh, see what she needs. Yeah, instead of um, her sending us a message, like the, the team that's on the on the live stream, if you can just reach out to her and get the message and then pass it over to our um, uh, sales team, that way they can reach out. David Fowler Hawkins says, um, hi Henry, checking in from Texas. Will you have videos for the new white tuner printing machine? Yes, absolutely. Well, we, are, uh, we already ha actually have the set of training videos um or already done on that machine so if you are if you have purchased one and you're getting delivery on one um you should have access to your customer portal uh for all your recoma products and, and resources and in there you also find um resources specific to the white tuner uh transfer printer the, the um luminaris 200 so those training videos are, are on your customer portal it has a ton of resources if you if you guys don't know what the recoma customer portal is i would really encourage you to, to check it out because not only do you get um a ton resources on like training videos and your pre-training uh, and access to all your machine information but you get like who your who your rep is who your contacts are um, and and parts books and brochures and all, and all of those things on the actual uh, portal and you, there's also a referral program on there so if you want to refer your friends you can share your, your referral link and get credits towards you know uh, future purchases like like a sec like uh, add-ons and different um, different um, add-ons for, for embroidery or supplies for DT or your or your white toner transfer printer so a great resource so um, definitely log into that that's kind of your central hub for everything Recoma uh, products related and so I would definitely encourage you to, to, to check that out if you haven't if you haven't done so um, once you buy a product from us you do get access to that so um, make sure you 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 know get your login information and and, and create your account so that uh, you can log in and get all those resources but um, those white toner transfer um, uh, white tone transfer printing training videos are on our customer portal already and we'll definitely be creating more content on youtube and other channels to do like tutorials and other cool things with the white tone transfer printer
Surely these, yeah, says, I have had fabulous service from the service department. They have helped me so much. Give them th my thanks for a great job. Thank you for, for those kind words, Shirley. Um, and and like I said, if they don't get back to you in time, you know, feel free to, to contact again. You know, so, uh, as I mentioned, um, you know, we try to be perfect, but we're, we, we're nowhere near perfect. Um, but we strive towards the highest, highest standard that, that, w that, w that we can strive towards. Um, but sometimes, you know, people get busy and, and other things in the pipeline. So, um definitely feel free to, to, you know, give them another call and, and they'll be more than happy to assist. Yep. And as Linda Russell said, Hey, 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 Linda, good to see you again here. And, um, Linda also chimed in here, you know, with over 22,000 owners, it could sometimes take a little uh, longer. The Facebook page could also help. So yeah. So, um, if you are part of Recoma connect as a Recoma customers, uh, there are many times where you can get quick answers from, from other people. That's the, that's the reason why we created that, that, um, group and, uh, to have a community of embroiderers that can share their knowledge. So many times your peers will, will be able to answer a, a quick question and not have to wait for support. Um, but yeah, I mean, with, um, you know, we have, we have thousands of customers all, th all throughout the world. And so, uh, we, and, and I still think even with that, I, I do think we do a, you know, pretty great job in, um, answering and being prompt in, in our answers, um, with, with all of the inquiries and the, and the customers. Um, but sometimes one could slip through the crack and, and, uh, there are other ways to kind of, you know, either contact again, or, um, there are other resources on our, on our, um, YouTube page or on, uh, your customer portal or in these Facebook groups uh, that you can get answers from uh, from from your peers <clears throat> Question from Laura uh, Scott I have threads from Madeira, but I also bought threads from Amazon. How do you feel about? Um, bro threads to be honest Laura. I've never heard of uh, that brand before so I can't really comment on it um, but I would say that you know, I, I have a video on YouTube talking about this, but the the um, quick summary of that is I would generally not recommend you to kind of go with cheaper threads just for the sake of saving a few dollars because over the long run, you know, even though more premium threads are more expensive, but the difference isn't really that much. You're talking about maybe, you know, um, six, seven dollars per cone versus, you know, two, three, four, five dollars per cone. So you're only saving maybe two, three dollars uh, per cone if you go with a lower end thread versus a more premium thread. The thing is that two, three dollars can easily be be made up in lack of um, thread breaks and other issues that cheaper threads could give you. If you have more a more premium thread, you don't have as as many thread breaks. It's more it's more sturdy, uh, it's less brittle, and it just gives you a better quality and less headaches in, in, during the actual embroidery process. You know, people think that most of the time it's the machine, but a lot of times it's it's the thread. Also, if you're using bad thread or thread that's been stored in the storage for a long time and it's 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 brittle, that can cause a lot more thread breaks and fray and all of those things so um, I would pay the extra two three dollars per cone and save a lot of headaches and over the long run you make up a, a lot of that money uh, and savings through your production runs like you get you get a lot more done in the same amount of time less thread breaks less downtime and that can be easily you know multiple times your return on on your investment versus saving a couple of dollars on the thread so um i haven't i don't know that particular uh, brand um, um at all so i can't comment on that but other people have found success you know finding some threads online from amazon and, and things like that but um I would say that's that's the exception and not the norm. And I would generally recommend either Isocord or uh, Madeira thread, which is you know more of the premium threads in the market that can create you know a lot less issues for you in the long run. So, so th there's a question from from a moon Nim Nesu. I really want to learn how to do this, but I'm really not tech or computer savvy. So, um, I think that's a common misconception um, of people getting into the business, thinking that they need to be tech savvy or computer savvy in order to uh, be successful in this business. I, I think that's far from the truth, and I do think that you know, uh, uh, does it help? Of course, if you're tech savvy, of course, you know, learning the um, control panel is going to be easier learning the, you know, 
digitizing software is going to be easier. But a lot of things, you know, it comes with, with practice and we've made it so user friendly in terms of the control panel and, and the usage of the machine that um, many times people with no embroidery experience and, and not very tech savvy, they can, they can learn it. Now, obviously everybody's kind of learning uh, process is different. Some might learn faster than others. Some might learn more hands-on versus others. It just, you, you have to find kind of what works for you. But I would say that, um, if you generally, you know, put your efforts into into the craft and actually focusing on trying to learn it, and you actually put in the effort, and not just like, oh, you know, let me only spend a couple of hours on it every month to, to, to try to do it. If you really kind of focus on it as 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 a craft that you're trying to master, generally speaking, people do are able to to learn it and 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 get better at the craft and be quite successful in this business. Um, it's the ones that I think that um, might not have the time or might not have the dedication. And, and and you know, everyone's situation is different. They might be busy with with, with something else. Uh, something else in life gets in the way, and 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 that's normal. And so, but if you dedicate the time to this, I don't think that um, anyone is incapable of learning it. I think I think you are definitely capable of learning it. It's not rocket science, as I always say. It's not rocket science. Um, there is a learning curve to it, but I think if you put your mind to it, um, being tech savvy and computer savvy is not a prerequisite to being successful in this business. Yeah, and surely these kind of re reiterated my point here, right? I am so not a tech person, but I love my EM1010. You will love it once you take that first step. So I think the the general consensus is, yeah, this is not a prerequisite for you. To, uh, now, if you are tech savvy, it's, it's going to come much easier. But we've had success with a lot of people that don't have that background and are still able to find success. So I think I don't think it's a it's a requirement to, to have. Eddie Buzzon also asked, can you tell me more about the white toner printer and what it costs? Sure, so we have two packages. Um, I mean, a lot of the information is on our website um, that you can go check out, but in general, there's two packages, the starter package and the pro package. Um, the difference is the heat press that you get. You get an a, a, um, auto one versus a, a manual press um, in, the two, in the two packages. You also get more paper and supplies in the pro package. So there's more value. Um, you also get live training in the pro package instead of a um, pre-recorded training. So um, that that should help you in kind of um, you know learning about the machine and being able to to operate it in a in a in a in a comfortable way uh, if you go through a live training. <clears throat> um, now the price difference, I, I believe the uh, starter package starts uh, um, right right under five thousand dollars. It's like forty nine something, and then the um, pro package it's around sixty nine something. So um, right under seven thousand um, dollars. You can have the um, zero percent financing to go along with that. So they they start at the starter package is under a hundred bucks a month. I believe like ninety five dollars a month, and then the pro package is under one fi one fi one fifty a month. I think it's like. Um, I forgot the exact number, but it's like one thirty-five or something, one 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 forty a month. But um, you can you can kind of um, get in touch with our product specialists if you want to inquire more um, about those two packages, and they're great to complement your business in terms of adding another source of revenue to your business. If you do embroidery now, you can also add on heat transfer um, and white white toner transfer printing, and that helps to not only create multimedia designs that your customers might might love and pay more pay a premium for, but also just open up a lot more doors in becoming a one-stop shop for your for your business for your uh, to to your customers. So that if they need embroidery and they need printing, they can go, go to you without without having to you know go to someone else for the printing. That maybe they have embroidery as well, and then you know they end up doing all the business with them so uh, nowadays people try to you know become a one-stop shop um, for for their customers try to expand their offerings so that you can capture more of that business Miriam Lucero says, uh, personally, I think everything you guys do is awesome, especially with this Facebook group and videos you put out there. Extremely helpful. I don't have a recoma yet, but had I known what I do now, they would have been my first option. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. And uh, if things change in the future, Miriam, and then you're, you know, you're looking to expand with us, um, definitely feel free to reach out. We have uh, you know, many different options besides just embroidery, and we'd love to help you grow your business.
Liz Marie asked, um, the Ricoma have a printer for sublimation? Um, not currently, but um, very soon we're actually working on something that could um, that could that could definitely fit those fit those criteria and meet those demands. So D. Kaysen asks, while Madeira threads are better, don't I need a registered business in order to buy from them? I'm just starting out and waiting for my machine, so I don't want to register yet until I have all I need to start. Is there another thread I could use until then? Yeah, so your your uh, machine from us comes with a Madeira sample kit, so you can get started with that uh, to begin with. That can last you um, you know, qu quite a bit, uh, depending on kind of what orders you have. But um, I would say to, I would still recommend to stick with you know premium threads because it, over the long run it's just gonna you know be less headache if you don't have a registered business i believe I, i'm not really sure but i think there are re retailers that sell material threads at a retail price so you might have to pay more instead of at wholesale price and, and buy it directly from from them um but it's still accessible to those that don't have a business account but i would recommend that if you're looking to do this seriously that you have a business account because you can save a lot on supplies All right, let's see some uh, questions on YouTube. So the So Crafty Teacher with Alicia. Hello there. Hi. Hi, Alicia. Um, Shell Lin um, says, here from Scotland, looking to find out what the difference in the 7S and 8S in the 1501 TC. So um, 7S and 8S is really just the panel difference. Um, the 8S has a lot more features in terms of like um, auto digitizing. You can do portrait. You can, we have a video on that on the 8S panel. It's on the SWD model, which is just a larger version of the, of the TC model. Um, it, has, it has like the um, auto digitizing on portraits. You can import portraits via a JPEG. You can just load like a JPEG file in there and you can import portraits. You can also, it's also Wi-Fi. Uh, it's, it's also Wi-Fi uh, capable. So you can just connect your machine to your computer via Wi-Fi and transfer designs that way without a USB if you, if you so choose. With the 7S, you have to connect with an Ethernet cable Cable. it's not Wi-Fi capable um, yeah I think those are the the two uh, biggest differences it's also a complete it's a, it's also a larger screen obviously seven inch versus eight inch um, and the eight inch panel also has um, some pretty neat features like the um, uh, it's a it's a redesigned user interface so you can see a more like live view of the of the embroidery it's it's more a, a uh, like true view of of the of the design um, you also get um, a file management system with different folders uh, you get the onboard lettering um, all of those features you know are available on the 7s but it's it's, it's a little bit more enhanced and a, and a bit more fonts on the 8s so just a general upgrade in the kind of control panel um, experience so so that's the major difference but i think i think it, it breaks down to two major things in the panel which is wi-fi and also um the uh portrait embroidery that you can just load a jpeg without having to, to digitize it and it will kind of embroider out a portrait for you um, that's already digitized Robert Kaufman asks, will the RIP software be available offline? Rural internet is rather poor. Um, so our RIP software, I, I assume you're talking about uh, the um, white toner transfer printer software um, with Lumen RIP. So the RIP software, it's, it's delivered to you via the cloud. So you have to download it via internet. But once you download it and activate it, you don't have to have internet connection to actually use it. It's already kind of, you know, on your on your um, local drive. So but you do need internet to actually download it because we don't, you know, I think one of the benefits of, of, of a lot of the software that that we manufacture here. So um, Chroma, if you're looking at digitizing software for embroidery, and, and Lumen Rip, which comes with uh, the package for the white tone transfer printer. Um, 
those things are all delivered to you via like a true cloud, uh, you know, just sent, sent to you via the cloud. And then you can just you can just download it. We don't have any dongles and things that they need to mess with. I know that Wilcom, um, you know, if you've used Wilcom before, they have dongles and then and you have to plug it in. And if you break or lose your dongle, then then you have to buy a new license um, with with us, you know, because everything's in the cloud. As long as you have your activation code, you have your license code uh, and you don't lose that. You can activate this, you know, in the cloud, and you can transfer it to another computer, deactivate it on, the, on your previous computer, activate it on a new one, without having to, to kind of lug around a dongle that might break or um, or or get lost. And then if you lose it, it's like losing your license. And same with other um, manufacturers of. Uh, of white toner transfer printers, they also with with their rip software, they also have a dongle, which they, they have to mail to you and all that stuff. Us, it's literally like if you wanted to get the software, um, we can just you know you download it via via the link. Um, that's which is which is you know on our website, and you just download it and you just put in your your activation code, and you're able to activate it. So that's the benefit of um, of having that. So, uh, but you do need internet to download it, and then you don't need you don't need internet to use it. Elvis uh, uh, Quasi says, "Wish I was recommended to buy two single heads instead of double one." So you know, it really depends on your business, Elvis. Um, with two uh, single heads, you get more flexibility, but it also costs more. You know, if you bought a two head machine, um, depending on your business, that could be more uh, cost effective for you um, than someone else, right? So it really depends on your business. There's no kind of kind of cookie cutter approach, but the general rule of thumb is. If you're doing more one-off orders and you're doing kind of more um, uh, customization and, and, pers and personalization and smaller orders and not these bulk orders, you're better off with multiple single heads because they can do different things at the same time. With a multi-head like a two head or up or like four, six or, or eight or 12 heads, um, you're doing the same design across all the different heads. And um, you know the benefit of that is if you have if you do a lot of bulk orders, it creates it creates a, a massive scale and, and and efficiency in your in your production to be able to pump out a lot more orders in the same amount of time versus having to set up you know multiple single heads to do the same thing. Um, also, the benefit is the cost per head as you scale up with a multi head is lower per head versus a single head, but you lose the flexibility of being able to not only like put it in separate places and lug it around, put it in different corners or different Different areas of your shop, but at the same time, you, you can't do you know different designs at the same time. That's why most successful large embroidery shops have a combination of their um, single heads and multi heads within the same shop. So they'll have like you know a six head, a two head, and then a, and then a you know one or two single heads, right? Like that's a good setup because you can use your single heads for these like personalization orders and small orders or even samples for your customers to, to test them out um, while your multi-heads can be used for bulk orders, right? A, a great example that I always give is think of a uh, order that you would do for a soccer team, right? If you have a local soccer team that, that approaches you and, and says, hey, I need, um, you know, three jerseys for every player. I have, you know, 20 players on the team. And, um, you know, so that would be a, a 60 piece order, right? Now, this is where a single head and multi-head combo will come in really handy because the team's name uh, that you have to embroider on the jerseys are the same, right? They're the same across um, all the players, but the players' individual names on the jerseys are different. So, so if you have like three jerseys that you need to do for each player and 20 players, you know, you can use your multi head to embroider the logos of the team. And then while that's, that's being done on each run, you can take it to your single heads and start embroidering the individual names of each player. Like that's a much more efficient use of your equipment than to only have a multi-head, which is then, you know, if you embroider the team's logo, then you have to do that first and then take all of those off. And then you have to shut off all the heads besides one to start doing the individual names. That's not very efficient use of a, you know, four or six head.
But on the flip side, if you only have single heads and you're doing this type of order, imagine you know the, the all the setup time because you have, you have to you have to set up like multiple machines to even get the same level of output as a six head would. Um, but at the same time, you know, and also at the same time, the cost of you know five or six different single heads is definitely a lot more than a six head machine, right? So your cost per head you know drastically decreases the uh, more heads you get. If you get six single heads, you can probably you know you can probably get two or even two and a half closer to three uh, six head machines with the the number of single head machines that you're buying. So um, the scale efficiency is just it's just very, very different. But at the same time, it offers you that you know what you're paying for in terms of the premium for a single head machine is also the flexibility of what you can get. You can you can do you know anything you want you know d different designs at different times and, and all of those things. You're paying for that flexi uh, flexibility, not for the kind of economies of scale of a uh, bulk order. So that's why a lot of uh, um, big shops they have a combination of both so that they get the best of both worlds that's that's really the true like you know um, uh, goal that a lot of people try to try to get to to have a combination of single head and multi heads to run their shop more more effectively Marvin Gendis asks, "Do you have support in Spanish and trainings?" Yes, we absolutely do. We um, we have you know uh, actually dedicated support reps that speak Spanish um, to to help any customers with uh, um, that 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 speak Spanish, as well as trainings in Spanish if that's what you request. You can actually request that in your um, training portal in your in your customer portal. Um, you know what language you want the training to be in, and we can schedule that accordingly. Mr. 031 says, how does your single head compare to Brothers BES 1216 single head? So I'm not too fam too familiar with the BES uh, 1216 particular model, but I know that the BES series um, is, di is uh, discontinued. That's like, you know, because Brother used to make, they used to be in the business of manufacturing um, uh, commercial grade embroidery machines. Now they're purely on the on the home embroidery machine side. So you see, like the 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 brother PR uh, PR uh, 1050, the PR 1000, PR 650, uh, PRS 100. Th those are the kind of the home embroidery machine hobbyist machines um, that they have um, cur uh, currently. The BES models are definitely discontinued. Um, but I would say that you know and. They've been they've been discontinued for quite a while, probably closer to like ten years ago. So they're no longer on the market, and therefore a lot of parts are not be able to be um, serviced or uh, or purchased for those machines. And so they're really being being phased out. In fact, we. Um, over the last several years, a lot of uh, franchises for embroidery actually um, that had brothers machines to to start with, maybe you know 10, 15 years ago. Um, now that they've been they've been phasing out, they've actually switched over to our machines. So um, you know, I would say that uh, you know I've never personally uh, used one, but I just know that. Um, the BES is discontinued. So if you're looking about uh, in getting a single head machine from Brother for the BES series, um, I w it definitely is used and probably you know uh, eight to ten years old. And I would definitely make sure that uh, you're still able to get parts for them because in reality they're they're very old and you can't really source the parts. So once uh, some electronics break or anything like that, it's really kind of a dead machine. Um, but they are still making the uh, PR 1000s and the and the home embroidery machines, the 10 needle, the six needle, uh, more comparable to the EM 1010 that we have. Um, but they, they are no longer in the commercial embroidery machine business. Black Scorpion asks, "Why are your good offers uh, for?" only for USA and not for Europe. So um, I get asked this question a lot and the, the you know, uh, quick answer that I can give is, you know, every every country, every region is different, uh, even though kind of, you know, we manufacture the, the machines, but every region's kind of currency is different. Every region's um, taxes are different, import taxes and usage taxes. Every um, region's kind of like, um, 
uh, pricing is different, you know, based on their, their local currency. So it's very difficult for us to um, to control, like, you know, pricing across the board in every single region. And that's why it's really dictated by the local distributor in your region and what, you know, what their what their price is, what, what they offer in the packages. So I would really kind of re recommend you to go to them and ask, like, hey, you know, can you be more competitive with this package or whatever the case is uh, and, and, and try to, you know, get a better deal that way. But in reality, the packages are determined by your local dealers. Just kind of like when you go shop for a car, you know, different dealers might have different prices and, and, you know, even within the same city. But here, you know, we're talking about different countries and different regions, which which might have a complete different tax uh, system, a complete different currency, uh, and, and, and also a complete different exchange rate. All of that, all of those factors play into how they price their packages and what they include in the packages. So I would definitely recommend that you um, contact your local distributor uh, and, and, you know, ask them about what what's included yeah because and and to and to kind of add one more point to that right like it's very you know as you can imagine because we're we don't operate in those countries and we rely on the on the distributors in those countries it's very difficult for us to dictate hey you have to sell this or you have to sell that um when it might not be possible for them because of their currency because of their uh you know sales tax and and local tax structure because of their import taxes when they import the machines um all of those things are are different different factors that each that's different for each distributor and so um you know they determine what their packages are for their local market all right, let's go over on to Instagram to see if we have any questions from there. So yeah, if you have any questions from Instagram, feel free to, to type those in. I think I, I logged off for a while, so then the questions kind of disappeared. But if you have any questions on Instagram, feel free to, to type those in and I'll get those answered. All right, so in the meantime, let's go back to Facebook and take a look here. Daisy um, but McLean says, uh, I am new to this. I have learned a lot with all the available videos and I am waiting on my recoma to arrive end of the month and ready for the next level. Great to hear, Daisy. And um, can't wait to see what you can do. So make sure you, you know, tag us on social media and all of that stuff so that uh, we can kind of you know, see what uh, great things you can make with your machine. All right, um, next question here from uh, Valerie Gordon. What are some industry rules I should follow to ensure my business is well positioned for continued success? Great question and a kind of a you know high level question at that, but um, I think I'll go about answering this and you know, break it down to two, two or three points. I think the first and foremost thing is, I kind of mentioned this before, right? You need to have good relationships with your suppliers and your vendors. Um, why? Because you know you will need those supplies when you purchase them for your for your business. And there's a saying that you know you make money uh, when you buy, not when you sell, right? So um, the inputs uh, cost that goes into your business, whether it's threads, the supplies, the backing, the blanks, you want to have good relationships and and reliable vendors that you can source from, so that you can buy your blanks, buy your supplies buy your threads, buy your ink and all of those things um, in a timely manner and, and, and also in a cost effective way so that you can scale your business and make sure that that's, that's very consistent, right? One thing is the reliability of those vendors and how um, responsible they are in getting your orders out on time, but at the same time, getting good pricing and good relationships with those vendors and suppliers will help you drive further margins for your business because as I mentioned, you make money when you buy. So if you buy the supplies at a, at a discount, if you buy things uh, right you're going to make money on the on the back end with it because you know there's only uh, there's uh, there's only so much that you can price in terms of the offerings that you give to your customers whether that's embroidery um, uh, 
you know, DTG or, or white tuna transfer, those things have a certain a certain demand and therefore dictate a certain price in the market. And then on, on the flip side, on the supply side is what you can also control in, in terms of, you know, where you buy your things from to make sure that they're good quality, that they're reliable and they're very affordable and, and competitive in price. That's how you kind of drive the wedge between your demand and what you kind of charge in terms of revenue coming in and your cost and you drive that wedge for your margin. So buying right is definitely very, very important and having the, um, you know, right things and right vendors in place to be able to kind of, you know, scale your business and build a reliable source of supplies and vendors that you kind of keep in contact with. And that's why I, I, I say to make sure you get these um, business accounts established and wholesale accounts for these different vendors because you get more competitive pricing and wholesale pricing rather than retail pricing. And that can drive an extra you know, 10 to 15% in your margins just by doing that. So it's definitely worth it to get an LLC and all of those things in place to make sure that you can get those discount pricing and wholesale pricing from these vendors. So that's that's point number one. The second thing that I would um, say, you know, uh, we kind of talked we kind of talked about the demand side, right? Now the next thing is, is uh, sorry, we, we kind of talked about the the supply side, right? Uh, the next thing is on the demand side. You gotta you have to build a good relationship with your with your customers, and you really need to know kind of uh, where your customers' uh, needs are. Uh, and what I mean by that is always having a finger on the pulse of what's happening in the market, what's happening with your with your customers. What do your customers want? Um, those things are super important because you know it helps you stay ahead of the trends of like popular things that that people want. Maybe it's patches on hats. Maybe your customers are asking for a lot of jackets or bags or whatever the case is. Right? You want to know kind of what your customers' needs are, and those needs can change per customer and per business. Right? Um, and you know knowing a, a restaurant will will need some masks or um, aprons or um, you know different uniforms and be able to kind of package those things and have the skill set to embroider or print on those different items for that business is going to put you ahead of the competition in knowing you know what works for that business and what works for their needs so knowing the um, uh, you know where the where the customers at and knowing their needs even before the, they, they kind of think of it is going to uh, also help because I've also preached this a lot where if you're uh, doing business with a restaurant and they're ordering polo shirts from you or, t or t-shirts for their staff, you know, maybe you want to recommend aprons for their chefs or, or chef's hats or, you know, other things that could complement what they're already ordering. And that's thinking beyond, that's thinking ahead um, and really kind of knowing your customer's needs and telling them what their needs are before they even think of it. And they, they can definitely appreciate that level of um, dedication from you. And it also obviously expands your product offerings to them and therefore expand your relationship and therefore your revenue with that account. So knowing your customer's needs is the second thing that I would mention. And then the third and final thing that I would say is to become a, a, a one-stop shop because um, I kind of mentioned this uh, earlier where things are all going uh, in this direction where people like to shop from just one place and not have to go th to go to one shop for embroidery, another one for DTG, and another one for screen printing and, and, and all of those things. And um, you know, if someone else has all of those different decoration methods under one roof, you might e very easily lose that business because they can offer three things when you can only offer one. So uh, becoming a one-stop shop is also super critical. Um, you know, that's how kind of Amazon really kind of dominated the entire uh, world essentially with uh, selling everything un under the sun and getting into a lot of different industries and verticals. Um, but they started out with just one vertical with, with books. And this is what I always mention: like it's good to be a one-stop shop and create that one-stop shopping experience for your customers and that's what everyone should strive towards in this business uh, but at the same time you have to start from somewhere and you have to master one vertical first master your niche and then expand your verticals and, and your and your different areas beyond that after you've mastered and dominated that niche that's going to help you scale a lot easier and also build your cre your credibility in that niche in that vertical so that it's easier for you to expand down the road so um, but that is the that is the ultimate goal that 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 a lot of people strive towards in having a lot of different apparel integration methods under one roof so that they can become that one-stop shop for their customers and give more offerings and therefore expand your, their their revenue but at the same time it's more even more important to retain those customers because they could easily go somewhere else if you don't have all of those offerings all right. I hope that makes sense. That kind of, you know, really breaks down the the three main things that I mentioned into different points, and hopefully, um, you know, that helps you in in kind of scaling your business going forward.
Ferg Inglis says, Hi Henry, I have an EM1010 and an MT2002, which I love. Is shutting off one head to run test stitches, etc., damaging to the machine long term? The EM1010 is set up for caps and with and mighty hoops for the MT is just quicker. I do switch between head one and two um, to try to even out the wear a bit. So that's a great question. Um, it, it really doesn't. What it, what, it, what it simply does, just so you know the mechanics behind how that works, is there's a solenoid uh, behind the heads. And when you kind of shut the head off, it just engages that solenoid so it pushes the reciprocator out of the way so it doesn't bring the, bring the needle down. The internal of the machine is still running because it's, it works on one single axis. So it's still running, it's just it's, it pushes the reciprocator out of the way so it doesn't engage with the, with the needle bar. And therefore that's how you see that the needle doesn't go down and therefore you've shut, you've shut off the head. So that's kind of the... Um, that's kind of the, the the mechanism that works behind it. It doesn't really damage the machine in, in any way. Um, it all it does is engages one single component, uh, and 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 um, you know that causes the head to be shut down, so you can run only one head out of the two. But um, you know if you if you if, if it makes you more comfortable to kind of switch between sh shutting off one head or the other to kind of even out the tear a bit, um, you know that can that can it, it certainly won't hurt. Um, but I wouldn't be too too worried about kind of shutting one head off, uh, you know, versus the other. Simon Biggin asks, I'm about to purchase a um, RCM2001 or a, I guess that's an MT2001. I have no uh, experience of embroidery. What sort of learning curve am I in for? So Simon, I've answered this question before in, in, the, in this way where, you know, if you have no experience with embroidery, generally it will take you about three to six months to actually kind of climb that learning curve. We've seen that people obviously kind of learn, you know, at different paces. So it really depends on your situation. Are you doing this full time? Are you doing this part time? I don't really know your your particular circumstance to know kind of what kind of um, time and capacity you have to dedicate to learning this. But I, I will say this: it's definitely able to be learned. People um, have learned it much faster than three three to six months without having any prior experience. Uh, some people are you know take a little bit longer, and that's completely fine. Um, some people do this do this full time, so they can climb the learning curve faster because they have more time dedicated to it versus others that do this part-time so depending on your circumstance you it, it will be you know longer or shorter but generally speaking on average we've seen people climb that learning curve within three to six months um, that's what we really kind of aim for in terms of our training our support to really get you that kind of guidance so you can climb that learning curve within that that time period and again that's for, for people that have no embroidery experience whatsoever no sewing um, experience in the past and they, they've been able to do that within that time frame and um you know i i truly believe that you will be able to to, uh, to do that too as long as you put in the effort and the, and the you know dedicate time to actually learning it now if you're using your machine like you know once once a month um that's a different story right so it really depends on your circumstance but if you're if you're looking to do this seriously as a business um and you put in the time and dedication to do it i, I don't think this is rocket science at all and you're, you will be able to learn it with with our training with our support uh especially the ongoing support seven days a week and after hours uh, which by the way we're the only one that offers that in the industry um, with the seven day and after hour support, as well as a ton of training videos and YouTube content and all of those things to help you along your journey. Darlene Marie asks, is there a threading apparatus that would help thread the MT-1501? It's very hard to see the holes and feed them. Um, it gets better with time. There's no, you know, some people have used tweezers to kind of, you know, um, hold it more steady while they while they thread it. So some people have found that helpful. So you might want to want to check that out. Um, others have, uh, you know, just been more practice. And then, you know, now nowadays our, our, our techs here, um, you know, they can pretty much like throw the thread in because they get so comfortable at doing it. And when you first start, it's, it's, it is it is uh, slightly more difficult, but you get used to it and you kind of just, you know, you can kind of eyeball it and see where the general area is and you get very good and, and, and adept at just threading it very quickly. But you can also use tweezers if that helps. Shirley Dees asks, Henry, do you have any secrets that helps correctly place polo logos? Um, we have an entire video on YouTube sh showing that. Um, it, you know, how to place logos, uh, on, especially left chest logos on, on polos. That will tell you a lot 
more in detail than I can on on this video. So I would encourage you to, to make sure to, to check that out. Also, you can get like the the Mighty Hoops attachments so that you can you can have like the Hoop Master and Mighty Hoops so you can place it very consistently each time. That definitely helps with with left chest logos. Um, so look into that. And I think the starter kit's about like five hundred and forty one dollars or or, or or something like that. So um, you know that. Uh, tool can definitely help but at the same time we also give some tips on like where to place your logos uh, what's the right placement and things like that um, that video covers a lot more Joe Perez uh, asks what's the best for backpacks 8 in 1 or the clamp system um, I would say either I mean I've seen more of people using the 8 in 1 for it um, I, I've also seen people use the clamp system for it. It's you know, uh, it's just two two different ways to do it. The eight in one, you would need to use sticky backing, which some people you know they you know on the bag they 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 like to use it or they don't like to use it. So it really depends on your preference. But either one can definitely work. It also depends on the embroidery area that you're trying to embroider on for the bag. Um, I'm not really sure how big the clamp system is, but um, you know, I, I would I would say kind of go with the embroidery area that will fit your your design. And um, you know, then it's just, then after that, it's just a personal preference. All right, um, that seems to be all the questions on Facebook. Let me see if anything else on YouTube. We're also coming up to the top of the hour here, so almost uh, done with this, and we can announce the winner. <clears throat> all right. Carthy Carly asks, how do you buy orders in your country's online for embroidery design? Um, so you can go to hoopmade.com. I'll type it in here. Um, our team can, can type it in there for hoopmade.com. Um, you can. You, it's a subs, it's a subscription service where you can download pre-digitized designs uh, of different categories. We're we're constantly adding to that as well. So if you're interested in that, you know, make sure to check that out. That's h o o p m a d e dot com, um, and you can subscribe for as little as like six dollars a month. All right, let's see if any other questions here. All right, um, I think that should be it. Unless we have any other questions. Let's see on Facebook here, any other questions? Essa Rodriguez asks, what do you do when you need to change a color on your EM1010 due to it only having 10 um, heads, which I, I assume you mean like threads. So um, we actually have a video on YouTube showing you uh, a, a like multicolor design that's that's more than the number of needles. I think in, in general, you, you, have, you have to stop the design and then you kind of have to change out the thread in the middle. Um, you can you can cut the thread and then tie a knot and then pull it through and th thread the needle and that way you can have an, an, an um, extra color. So um, the, the the easier way to do it is obviously you know upgrade to a 15 or even 20 needle um, machine that we have now, and which by the way, if you guys don't know that we have a, we have a 20 needle machine, um, make sure make sure that to, to, to uh, check that out. It's the MT 2001, uh, and also the, in, it's also available in two heads and th and three heads. So we've launched that a couple of months ago, um, has gotten a great response, and and it's already back ordered uh, actually for for the 20 needle machines. Um, and so for those, you can go up to 20 colors without having to change anything, which uh, more than it's more than enough for a, a lot a lot of people. And more importantly, for those that don't you know use a lot of multicolor designs, you know maybe you only use 10 or 15 and don't need 20. It's also good to have uh, multiple needles preset for different types of type different, different types of garments you can have ballpoint needles sharp point needles um, smaller needles larger needles right for caps bags um, t-shirts right you can have a wide range of needles preset uh, with uh, with repeated colors on each each one so you you, you can you can essentially split up your 20 needle head 
into like three or four heads where three or four ranges of needles are preset into each one and you can just use that range for a particular order without having to you know switch out the needle on the fly so that's also a benefit of having you know more needles just by you know beyond uh the number of colors that, that you can actually embroider so that would be the easy way to do for you um, uh, as uh, going forward if you're ever looking to upgrade to a 15 or 20 needle machine. Uh, but in the meantime, there's there's a video on like you know um, changing the color and the cones when you are running out of uh, you know colors on the machine and you have to add additional colors. All right, um, I think that's it. So to um, wrap up everything before we announce the winner, as I mentioned, we do have um, the different sales going on. So if you are joining us um, uh, late, you know we kind of cover this at the beginning of the live stream. But uh, uh, we we have the white toner transfer printer, the um, Luminaris two hundred, which we launched last uh, month, uh, just just a couple of weeks ago, and so um, has had great results. A lot of people have ordered them, so I believe um, we have more machines coming in. That's that's in containers that are on their way here, and uh, even some of those are being sold. Uh, as we speak so if you're looking to get into kind of white toner transfer printing make sure to check that out we have the two packages starter and pro package um, that i kind of talked about in in this live stream make sure to get in touch with our team to kind of learn more um the starter package starts at you know as low as 95 bucks a month so under 100 dollars. like there's not a lot of places where you can uh, there's not a lot of business that you can start with under 100 bucks a month so um it is it is quite affordable um uh, also, we have the um, the embroidery machine sale that going on for 130 bucks a month with zero percent financing, um, starting you know with our EM1010 and then g going up from there. Um, if you're looking to get started in embroidery, this is also a good time to to do that. And then finally, the DTG printers we have uh, the Rico RI1000 DTG printer for 235 a month um, with zero percent financing as well. So. Um, hopefully, you know, if you're looking to get started in any of those three different categories, make sure to contact our team and, 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 um, inquire about each of those products. If you have one or multiple of those products and you're looking to expand further, as I mentioned, to kind of become that one-stop shop, um, it will definitely be great to check out any of those, uh, products and add it to your business. All right. So, um. With that being said, uh, if you also if you guys haven't already followed us on our social media channels, we'll kind of put that handle on the bottom there again. So just um, you know, re remind everyone. You know, we have a ton of videos on YouTube um, at uh, on our YouTube channel. We have a ton of uh, in entertaining stuff on TikTok. We're active on there as well. Um, we're on Instagram and Facebook. So uh, you know, all of us, uh, um, all of the things down there, um, you know, in the uh, in the on the screen there. Make sure to f to follow us there. It's all at at Recoma HQ. That's the handle there. So um, Instagram for a lot of the pictures and short reels and and IGTV videos of, of, of different things. TikTok for the entertaining stuff, and then the YouTube videos, uh, long form content on the on the tutorials and business content that I have there. All right. So I hope that helps. Um, Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done so already, or follow us on all those uh, all, all those channels, and then um, we'll be announcing the winner of the thread kit. So let's see who the winner is there. Okay, so just waiting for our team to announce the winner. All right, and so the winner is Shirley Dees. Shirley Dees, congrats! You've won the um, starter kit with the with the threads. 48 different cones of threads. So congrats on that. I, I hope that you put it to good use. Um, thank you for joining uh, this live stream and uh, you know asking your questions. Uh, I, I this your name a, a, a couple of times there. So um, again, you know these things are really meant to help you guys. So I hope you guys found this helpful and um, 
and got a lot of value out of it, you know, the, the thing that I would ask you to do is um, make sure to implement these things in your business and actually put them into action because, you know, just listening to, to these things, just, uh, you know, hearing hearing me talk is not gonna, um, you know, drive and move your business forward. Um, the advice that I give and the type of, you know, um, knowledge that I pass on to you guys, I hope that you do kind of take that into consideration and, and implement that in your business because, um, you know, that's those things are definitely going to help. And um, it, it's only through these kind of implementations that you can grow your business further. So, um, Shirley, I, I hope you put those uh, threads to good use um, and, and hopefully see what you can do with those. Our team will reach out to you to get your information and um, and make sure that gets shipped out to you. Um, otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you guys here uh, next month. Take care.